Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 136 doing the top 10 cards from Cons of Tarkir. Now, I'm doing this before the set has been released, just after the spoilers. If you disagree with me, that's cool. Put your guesses in the comments before we get to the actual release date. I like to hear other people's opinions and sometimes I make mistakes. Let's jump right in. First, I want to remind people that this is going to be one of the most valuable sets out there because of the fetch lands. Now, my top 10 list is not including the fetch lands because I'm only focusing on new cards. Yes, the fetch lands are crazy. They are the best thing in the set. The foil ones are like winning the lottery. Polluted Delta is already pre-ordering at $100 and Flooded Strand at $75. I think these will actually drop a little bit in price once a bunch of packs get open, but the foils long term will go back up. These are staples in every format out there from cube to EDH to legacy to modern to standard uh, wonderful cards. I definitely recommend buying packs because the fetch lands are in there and it just brings up the value of the whole box significantly. Cons has five new clans. I'm curious how well these clan names will stick around. Um, I actually like the bug variation here, Soul Tie. The others really haven't stuck with me yet, but hopefully I hear Mardu and Jeskai used out there. I, I think they're better names than the other names that are out there for those clans. Asban and Tamir are a little bit rougher for me. The honorable mentions here is pretty large. This is a really tough set to evaluate because of how many multicolored cards are in the set. If these multicolored cards become the staple for what is played, the environment may be rather slow. Right out of the gates, Red Deck Wins is going to be your best choice to play, but as people learn to tune these decks, some of these cards could really jump in value. I also really like these cards for EDH. Uh, the Wingmate Rook was probably the toughest one for me to cut from the top 10 list. It could be the nice top of either a Boros or a white aggro deck. Uh, Raid is a very interesting mechanic. Uh, Hardened Scale is one that was mentioned by one of the patrons on the channel. I really like it in combination with a lot of plus one plus one counter effects. A Johnny Steadfast is a very solid inclusion there. But I would definitely watch these guys, especially Soren, if there's a good deck that Soren is played in, or there's a really good token deck, uh, Soren could be a mainstay in standard. In the number 10 spot here, I've got See the Unwritten. I like this card a lot for EDH and it has potential to be amazing in standard. It depends on what type of giant creatures come into standard. If we see a set similar to Eldrazi, this could just be incredible. I'm gonna be trying one of these in my mono green EDH. I need something to replace Rafelos, which sadly is going out of my deck. So see the unwritten is going in that spot. I like it a little bit less than Summoner's Trap because Summoner's Trap is an instant, uh, but it's still a very powerful card. In the number nine spot here, I've got Utter End. It is very similar to Vindicate. It doesn't hit land, but it is instant, and instant speed matters a lot. You will be able to use it after combat tricks. If there's a control deck in Esper or in Black White, this card is going to be in it as a three of or a four of. Number eight spot here, I've got Rattleclaw Mystic. With a three color set that is focusing on these uh, shards. This type of mana correction is going to be extremely important. And this particular card even ramps you a little bit. Yes, you have to put it out at three, but if there's a really high end to the curve of what's playable, the turn that you morph it, you're actually going to gain one mana. It also is a two one, so it's a decent beater in an aggressive or mid-range deck. I really like this card a lot. The number seven spot here, I've got the charms with an honorable mention to Crackling Doom. Most of these charms are going to be playable in multicolored decks and see a lot of play in EDH. They have at least two different effects to them that are very relevant. I also really like Crackling Doom here as an instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among them and it deals damage to your opponent I think this is a very solid card. In the number six spot here, I've got somebody who I wish was number one. It's a 6-6 six, six 
flash can't be countered gives your creatures trample creature incredible but we don't see a lot of control currently counter spells have really been reined in recently in standard if this was a few sets back where you saw a lot more mana leaks I can see this being a very powerful card. I'm definitely picking up a foil copy to play in EDH. It's going to be a great EDH card. I look forward to crushing some blue decks with it. The number five spot here, I've got Mantis Rider, which for a lot of people is not the most exciting card, but a 3-3 Vigilance Haste is exactly what I want in a tempo deck. It's the type of creature that I'm going to be able to put out on offense and on defense and then sit behind it with some burn or some counter magic and ride it all the way home. The Blood Soaked Champion has got to be the best one drop in the set. I was looking at the Swift Sphere here also as an honorable mention, but Blood Soaked Champion is right up there with Grave Crawler in his ability. If there is a deck that is super aggressive, we'll see Blood Soaked Champion in it. If there is a deck that includes Graveyard Recursion and some type of sac effects, Blood Soaked Champion will be at the top of that list also. The number three spot here, I've got Savage Knuckle Blade. A 4-4 four, four for three definitely is ahead of the curve. And the abilities on this one are just incredible. Return it to owner's hand gives you a real threat that gets around board wipes. Haste is really nice late game. This could be the cornerstone of a control deck or the top of the curve in an aggro deck. And plus two, plus two just increases that clock so much. I really like this card. I'm going to be picking these up. In the number two spot here, I've got Clever Impersonator. I did a whole video focused on clones because this card is so cool. It clones Planeswalkers. It clones equipment. It clones everything except land. Really cool card. I don't know if it's standard playable yet, but I'm going to try to break it in standard. I'm definitely picking it up to play in EDH. It is my new favorite clone in EDH. The number one spot here, I've got Sarkin. I don't think it's difficult to say that this is the best Reds Planeswalker we've ever had. The 4-4 Dragon Haste ability on him makes him perfect to be at the top of a Red Deck Wins curve. Maybe it's a little bit high on the mana, but he can help you win those control matchups. The minus three is going to keep him alive, and the emblem is just crushing against lots of decks. I like Sarkin. I'm going to try playing him in red decks win wins, uh, which he might be a little bit above the curve, but I'm also going to put him in a Planeswalker Super Friends deck. He would be great with several other Planeswalkers, especially if your opponent only has Heroes Downfall or one other thing that removes Planeswalkers. If you can overwhelm them with seven or eight Planeswalkers in a game, their removal is going to run out and then you're going to have massive advantage. I look forward to playing Sarkin. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. Please subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers. Thank you to everybody who's out there on Patreon. So Supporting the channel. We've got some cool contests coming up also.